was conducted, he did a series of tours. His very first one, it, it was my great honor, along with Sister Mary Anthony of uh, Catholic Charities, to escort Senator Hollins on his first so-called poverty tour. From there, he went down to Beaufort County, South Carolina. And out of that tour was born the Duke Beaufort Jasper Comprehensive Health Care Center. After that, it was followed by Franklin Fetter. Now, I was involved, I've been involved from the very beginning uh, in this movement throughout the South. Of course, it all started up, up in the, your part of the country, so the, uh, up in Massachusetts, if my memory serves, uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, but uh, Senator Sanders and I uh, have been working on these issues ever since I've been here uh, in the Congress. Uh, and um, uh, I won't get into all the details uh, as to what uh, this bill does. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to him. But I will say this. Community health centers, to me, are the ultimate safety net when it comes uh, to delivery of health care. I feel very strongly about that. And one of the reasons I push so hard for us to expand our discussion of so-called infrastructure, which we seem to want to limit to roads and bridges, and sometimes rail and ports. But seldom do we bring in water and sewage. But for water, safe drinking water, we are not going to have healthy children. Safe drinking water will give us a healthy workforce. And broadband deployment. Community health centers will not be as effective as they can be until we get broadband deployment throughout rural America so that community health centers in far remote communities uh, can be tied uh, to our teaching hospitals and other uh, places that would deliver health care. The community health center network is very, very important to the foundation upon which we're trying to build a great society. And with that, I yield to Senator Sanders. Let me thank Congressman Clyburn for the work that he has been doing for so many years in health care in general and in community health centers in particular. I think everybody understands that we have many, many challenges in our health care system. And one of the major challenges that we face is that our primary health care system does not allow people from one end of this country to the other to go to a doctor when they need to go to that doctor. That is true in urban areas. It is true in rural areas like South Carolina or Vermont and rural areas all over this country. It is true in Mississippi. It is true in Kansas. And the irony here is that even if you have health insurance, even if you have health insurance in many parts of this country, it is difficult to find a doctor. It is difficult to find a dentist whose services you can afford. Now, the good news is that Congressman Clyburn and I have worked together for a number of years. Uh, and the result of that is that as part of the Affordable Care Act, we were able to substantially expand uh, access to community health centers all over this country. Community health centers today, and I think a lot of people don't know this, now provide high-quality primary care to 28 million Americans in 11,000 communities around the country, regardless of their ability to pay. Health centers, importantly, not only provide primary health care, they provide dental care. Jim, that is an issue that we talk about far too little. Millions of people cannot get into a dentist's office. Community health centers provide dental care. They provide low-cost prescription drugs, and they provide mental health counseling, also an issue of huge consequence. The legislation that Representative Clyburn and I introduced in 2009 
successfully expanded community health centers as part of the Affordable Care Act, and let me tell you what that legislation has accomplished. Since the passage of that legislation, nine million more Americans have received primary care, two million more people have received dental care, 860,000 more people have received uh, mental health care, and 3,000 new community health center sites have been created. That is the good news. The bad news is that if Congress does not act by September 30th, these centers will lose the federal funding they need to keep their doors open. In other words, in just a few short months, millions of Americans could lose access to community health centers if Congress does not get its act together. And that is why Congressman Clyburn and I are introducing a bill today to not only strengthen community health centers, but to expand them by 10% per year for five years in order to meet the growing need for doctors, nurses, dentists, and mental health providers around this country. By increasing federal funding over the next five years, our bill will allow more than 5 million Americans to receive the primary health care they need each and every year. These health centers provide care to 13 million people in rural communities, most of whom have nowhere else to go. These centers care for more than 350,000 veterans, more than a million homeless people, and more than 2 million seniors. In Vermont, I am very proud that more than 176,000 people in our small state, over 28 percent, over 28 percent of our state's population receive their primary care at community health centers. And let's be clear, community health centers not only provide important services that the American people need, they also save taxpayers billions of dollars. If people do not have a community health center to go to, they go into an emergency room, which is the most expensive form of health care, primary health care in this country. So our goal is to say that in this country, this is not a radical idea, that when you get sick, whether you live in a rural area, whether you live in an urban area, you have a right to get into a doctor's office. And also what this bill does, very importantly, is we understand that there are many parts of this country, rural and ur urban, that are medically underserved. We don't have the doctors, we don't have the nurses, we don't have the dentists, we don't have the mental health counselors that people need. And what we do in this bill is significantly expand the National Health Service Corps. If you want to practice in an underserved area, we're going to forgive your medical school debts. That is a program that has worked very well, but it is a program that lacks money. So to my mind, this is an enormously important issue. It is going to address one of the great crises in our health care system, and that is a primary health care system that is totally inadequate. And I want to thank again uh, Congressman Clyburn for his outstanding work on this issue. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you so much for uh, taking us through uh, what this legislation is all about. And there are two people with us today uh, who carry out the responsibility uh, of making this legislation effective. You know, I always say that in trying to deliver government services, we have to balance efficiency and effectiveness. And no matter how efficient we may try to make it, we got to have people on board who can make it effective. And we have two of those people with us today from South Carolina, Latham Woodard, uh, who is the CEO of the South Carolina Primary Healthcare Association, and Tish. Now uh, I've been given a, a test. I've been given um, instructions uh, that uh, the spelling of your name ain't the way you pronounce your name. So I'm told it's kidding. Yes, thank you. Okay. In spite of that, you that sit here. Uh, so thank you all so much, and please join us here at the podium. Oh, thank you very much. Um, yes, my name is Tess Kinning. Um, I'm the president and CEO of Bi-State Primary Care Association, representing the community health centers in both Vermont and in New Hampshire. And it is my pleasure to stand um, in support of this bill and applaud Senator Sanders and Congressman Clyburn for their leadership. 
Um, in Vermont, we have 12 community health centers at 66 sites serving as the health home for 176,000 Vermonters, and that's nearly a third of, the, of Vermonters are seen at community health centers in all 14 of our counties. Throughout our rural straight state, our community health centers provide a holistic appro approach to comprehensive integrated primary care and prevention. And that includes not only medical, but mental health, behavioral health, medication assisted treatment, substance use disorder, and oral health. Our communities serve our children, our moms and dads, our grandparents, our friends, families, neighbors, our farmers, our homeless, our veterans. And they serve people not only in their offices, but in their homes, in their schools, in residential care settings, in nursing home, and in homeless shelters. They differ from other practices in their comprehensive approach to health. From the beginning, as you mentioned, the health centers are just don't provide a medical care, but they consider housing, food security, education, transportation, social integration. They're community focused and they're community trusted resources. They care for their patients where they're born, where they grow, where they live, where they work, and where they age, and no one is turned away. This bill will allow community health centers in Vermont and across the country to not only grow in depth and breadth to meet their patients' needs, but to ensure that they have the workforce and the physical space to serve the patients. With added um, capital for physical plant, for technology, for in infrastructure, as you mentioned, the community health centers can actually provide more mental health and substance use disorder, especially as an emerging public health crisis that we have in the United States. They can provide more dental services, pharmacy services, vision services, and address emerging public health issues. The community health centers in Vermont and across the nation have unmet need in their communities, and they're well positioned to expand this need and using the resources from this bill. So this bill is essential to increase access to care for patients, not only in Vermont, but across the country. And I thank you, Senator Sanders and Representative Cliven. Thank, thank you. you. We have an adjustment here. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Lathrum Woodard. I'm the CEO of the South Carolina Primary Health Care Association. And I would like to thank Senator Sanders and my home state congressman and friend, Jim Clyburn, for the introduction of their bill to secure long-term funding for community health centers. I want to thank you on behalf of the 385,000, more than 385,000 patients seen in South Carolina, but also for the over 28 million patients seen nationally. In addition to what my colleague has so eloquently described in terms of the work of the health centers, I want to add that health centers are community-owned, nonprofit organizations that are in the business of providing quality health care for everyone. They contribute to the local economy. Their health, their health centers are economic engines. They contribute to their local economy through jobs and primarily through improvement of the total health of the community. That is, total health in terms of improvement of the health of the workforce, and of our children and people for education. We know the connection of good health and good education. You cannot learn if you're not healthy. This and the other bills that have been introduced and supported by Congress is a testament to the trust that Congress has in the community health centers to be on the front line. And as Dr. Sagunas, who is the HRSA administrator, recently stated, health centers are the boots on the ground for quality primary health care, behavior health services, or health services, addressing the opioid crisis and other substance use disorders, and caring for our veterans in their own hometowns. In South Carolina alone, we see over 5,300 veterans provide health care for over 5,300 veterans, and nationally, over 355,000 veterans are seen. Now that's services. That's not even speaking to the number of veterans we also employ. So what started? as a small movement by a few individuals a half century ago, as Congressman has said, which he was around, um, <laughs> has become a force of 220,000 dedicated health professionals in over 11,000 communities throughout the country. Congressman Clyburn, Senator Sanders, on behalf of my colleagues and the patients, the 28 million patients across the country that we serve, 
Thank you for recognizing our contributions to improving the health of our country and for your continued support. The reauthorization of the Health Center Fund will enable us to continue to work to achieve our collective mission, access to quality health care for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Both of you. Thank you. Uh, Senator, uh, I think you've got a few more minutes. You can, uh, I'm mindful of your time. Uh, any questions? The beauty and the strength of community health centers is that the door is open to everybody. Okay, If you don't have any money, you will pay on a sliding scale basis and you'll get the care that you need. It is no great secret that in urban America and in rural America, we have significant pockets of poverty. People cannot afford to go to the doctor. People have no health insurance. People have very high deductibles and co-payments. That impacts people all across this country and in fact, it impacts people of color even more. So this bill is a bill for all Americans. I think it will have a particular impact uh, on distressed communities. And especially rural communities. I, uh, uh, the most recent application, I thank you, Senator. I uh, heard that you were on, um, I think, National Public Radio the other day, you talked about 10, 20, 30. Right. We've used the 10, 20, 30 formula. Uh, and let me tell you what that is. That simply says that at least 10 percent of all the money that's appropriated here must go into those communities where 20 percent or more of the population has been stuck beneath the poverty level for the last 30 years. 10 percent of the money goes where 20 percent uh, between the more of the population has been stuck beneath the poverty level for the last 30 years. And by putting that formula in the appropriation, but we have it in 15 sections. We recently, in my congressional district, Bamberg, South Carolina, we recently stood up uh, a community health center focusing on emergency care uh, in a rural pocket uh, of, uh, of South Carolina. Kind of interesting, but just a few miles from there, um, uh, Dr. Uh, the astronaut, um, Dr. Satcher, who was an astronaut, who was a physician uh, on uh, a trip to the moon, went to that little school, Denmark Ola. He graduated from that little rural school at Denmark Ola. And to put that uh, health care center there is a testament to what a rural community can produce if given the opportunity. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you.